Okay, once you have hijacked this downloaded, right click on the file, click extract all, get your ex extraction wizard, we'll click next. That brings up the window asking you where you want to save it to, the destination. We'll click on browse. And in the destination window, click the plus sign next to my computer to open that. Click on C drive, local disk, and click OK. Then click next. And then to make it easier, we're going to leave that check to show extracted files. Click finish. And it highlights the folder. So I'm going to click on that. And there's your hijack this program. Double click on that. Accept the license agreement. Okay, once you're in the program, it brings you into the main menu. What we're going to do is do a system scan and save a log file. See, so it's scanning your computer for all the entries. And once it's done, it'll create a log file and that'll pop up for you. Now on the log file, it has a date and time, it shows you what version of Windows you're running, and your boot mode. And then it shows all your system processes that are running. Then below that, it's got a record of all the listings that it found in your registry. And all these listings, every one of them has exclusive rights to your registry, to read and write to your registry. And then that's how they change your wallpaper and your, your Internet Explorer homepage. They also create ads and whatever else they want to do in your registry. And then you can close the log file that Hijack created. And we're going to open that full screen so it's easier to read. Okay, we want to highlight an item. And then most time, read, just reading the location of it could tell you what it's for. Like that one's for Internet Explorer. It concerns the main start page. And it lists your start page, which that's MSN default. Now if that lists something else, like the one you're getting from the hijack, and it won't go away when you change it, then you don't want that entry in your registry anymore. Put a check mark next to it. And then down near the bottom... It says scan, fix, checked, or info on selected item. Now we've got that one selected. So we'll click info. And it'll bring up a window on what it knows about that particular control or link. When you put a check mark on that box, it's going to tell you what it's going to do. It's going to registry value is restored to preset URL. It's the action taken. Click OK to close that box. And move on to the next item. And most of the time, if you see toolbar in the heading or search, other than the Microsoft search said earlier, you can almost definitely put a check mark in that and, and remove it. It doesn't uninstall the program, it just takes away its permissions. You see further on down the string, this one tells you what it's connected to. And it's located in Pro Program Files, Yahoo, Companion. Most times you don't need this next entry, the Yahoo Toolbar Helper. As for Acrobat Reader, Acrobat Reader 6, that searches for updates for Acrobat Reader and, and a Toolbar Helper to help uh, Acrobat Reader load faster. If you don't read a lot of PDF, documents online then I wouldn't worry about loading this toolbar although it helps Acrobat Reader load faster it slows your browser down and I generally turn off all the toolbar entries run Avast okay that's our antivirus we know we need that that's a good one MySpace IM leave that permission on and kinda of keep going down the line and generally you won't need that extra button either 
Like every extra button, extra tool, extra button, extra tool, I always turn those off. <clears throat> it's just extra buttons. DPFs are updates or update permissions that have taken place previously. You know, the Yahoo installer needed permission at one time. The Genuine Advantage Validation tool needed permission. Um, I'll never use it again, so I'm going to clear that entry to show it's not in here. Okay, we get past the DPFs and we run into Shared Task Scheduler. Browse UI Preloader. Never heard of it before. That could be the spyware. It's located in Windows System 32 Browse UI. DLL. Okay, it's highlighted. Go down to the bottom. Click on Info on Selected Item. This is an undocumented registry key. The recommended action taken is the registry value is deleted. The CLS ID key is deleted. So we'll probably buy that. We don't. We don't need that. That could be what's causing the problem. And right below it, there's another entry for it. Cache Damon. Okay, the AOL we know is good, AVAS is good, Broadcom services for our wireless internet, Intel Corporation is good, iPod services, LEXBCES.XQ, I have no idea, Lexmark International, so that's for the printer. And so you go down the line, you read the different entries, and you look next to them and you can find out what they're for. Okay, so we've gone through the list, we see which things we didn't want, which we did. We checked them all out, got the information on them to make sure we didn't want them. And you click Fix Checked. Tells you how many fixes are selected, 27. So permanent delete and or repair what you selected. And Hijack This determines whether to delete them or repair them for you. you click Yes. It warns you about BHOs because those are your toolbars and stuff like that. But if, if you delete these entries, your legal toolbars will gain the access they need next time you use them. Okay, once the screen's clear, you know it's done. Click on scan again. Take a look through and see what entries came back. You know, the ones you clicked off of that you didn't want. Did they come back in here? If they came back, just click on them run fix checked again and then if they still come back go to the location that they're located the C program files whatever it is and delete the file manually and if that doesn't work sometimes you'll have to boot up into safe mode and delete the file and when you close the program or go back into the folder that that we extracted or created you'll see hijack this log file and your backups the highest hijack this view a list of backups and click on the ones you want restored and click restore and that's how you do your backup Open the log file, click anywhere in there, go to edit at the top, and click on select all, and click edit again, and click copy. You won't see anything happen, but it copied it to your clipboard. And just remember, right click, paste, and that'll place it wherever you want it, whether in an email, or on a forum, on a website, whatever. But if you want to send me that log file, I'll go through it and tell you what to remove and what not to. And just for good measure, restart your computer. <clears throat> 